G'day guys, how are you? Welcome back to another video tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can check if a user has already been taken when inserting data. So for example, you go to insert a new username, but that username has already been taken. We can make um, our console application sort of tell us, no, look, that username's already been taken. Please enter another username using vb.net. So let's begin. So I'm just going to use a console application. Um, but if you guys are using, you know, a standard Windows form application or whatnot, you can definitely do that. Just follow these steps and run your query and you'll be cooking with gas. So let's begin. So first of all, um, I'm going to use SQL Server, um, but it should work with Access if you are using Access. If not, leave a comment below and um, I can help you out with that. So first of all, I'm going to get import client. Okay. Um, after that, I need to get my connection string. So I'm just going to write here, im public string I don't know actually, can I just write dim SQL con or connection string perhaps I don't know I've been using um, C sharp quite a lot lately so um, I can't even really remember the syntax to be honest of vb.net so let's just see what happens um, okay so I need to get my connection string so what I need to do now is I need to get the server's name so I'll just write here server equals that one, I need to get the database. So, database 101, I've just created for the sake of this video. So, data, oops, database equals database 101. And since we are using a database and a server which is on this very computer, and I'm using integrated Windows um, security, I can say integrated secure, oops security equals true so that should link us to the data um, our database that we've got and in matter of fact our table so yeah okay so let's begin so the very first thing I need to do is I need to declare a few variables so I'm just going to write dim sql con as new sql uh, connection and then within there I can put my connection string that I created just before okay now what I need to do is I'm just going to write console dot right line um, enter a new username okay then after that I'm just gonna run, oops <laughs> see I've been using um I've been using this uh, C sharp for too long so dim input equals console.read line okay so whatever the user um, writes in input this variable input I've just created which is a string it's gonna equal that and I'll do this in blocks that way it's easier to read for you guys Okay, now what I can do is I can open our, open the SQL connection. So SQL con, oh my god, I cannot type today for some odd reason and IntelliSense is not helping with the situation. Con.open, so this will open the connection. And then once we've done that, we can now say dim command zero, although you can call it if you want, uh, as new SQL command. So this is basically like a Query. and then we can say select anything from uh, DBO so database and it was called I can't remember users table okay users table um, where and what was the column called oh my god I'm so bad at this um, users name so I've had one just before called Andrew so username where username equals at user I'll write here current value how's that uh, well, no I'll just write here users actually that probably looks a bit better I'll do it in capitals too so there's our parameter and we're calling it users now every time we write an SQL query you need to also remember to do a after we've written it to do a little column and then write SQL con okay so it knows exactly where it's looking in and then once we've done that we can say cmd zero dot add sorry parameters yeah dot add with a value we need to put our parameter name first so we need to put the at users this will help stop SQL in um, injection and all that sort of stuff and then we're going to put in the object value so in this case it's just going to be input okay and then once that's done we need to create another declare another variable we can say dim reader zero um, as a reader, I think it is, yeah, reader, the SQL data reader equals cmd0.execute the reader. So we're going to execute the reader 
And now here's the fun part. So we can say if reader zero dot has rows. So has a rows basically means that if it has a rows and it's containing the input, then we'll just write here console dot write line and we'll do a string dot format just for a bit of fun. Even though we don't actually necessarily have to write this big junky code, but it's good practice. Um, is already in the system and we're going to tell it to pass through input. Okay, so string.format. Cool, so what's gonna happen is, um, if you didn't notice the curly braces in the zero, basically whatever input equals, it'll put it there. So for example, for Android, it's gonna say Android's already in the system. Okay, else, so else if it does if it doesn't have any rows, so it doesn't contain that. First of all, we need to close our connection. I know it looks really stupid here, but um, just for the sake of the video and a quick fix, I guess. Although you should never rely on quick fixes. But for this video, yes, I'm relying on quick fixes. So then we need to open the reopen the connection. So we're going to close it and basically reopen it again. So it flushes everything pretty much. Now we need to, in my case, uh, or even your case, this is it. That's it. If you want to check to see if a value is already in your database, if it is, then it's going to bring up this error here. Um, console right line, you know, such and such is already in the system, and then you can continue on with your program. However, for this particular video tutorial, I'm going to also add a, a, a username as well, okay? So I'm going to create another command. So I'm just going to write dim cmd1 as new. SQL command and I'm just going to write insert into dbo.users table and I need to select which row so it's just the user username row and the values are going to be at do I put the equal there? I don't know I can't remember, we'll find out let's put a new value this could be wrong this Query, but hey, we'll, we'll figure it out. SQL connection, and then we can say cmd one dot parameters dot add with the value. We put our parameter value in first, a so new value. I cannot, I cannot talk today. I don't know what's wrong with me. And then we'll put in here input. Okay, so. We're going to basically insert input into the new value. Now you're probably asking what is new value. This is just a parameter. This is to stop SQL injection. Um, so whatever is basically in here, now I could name this anything. I could call this train, I could call this cat, I could call this absolutely anything, but it needs to have the at symbol. And whatever is in this value, it's going to insert it into our users uh, column or row, whatever it is. And then, so once we've done the parameters, we've added with the value, we need to execute the command, okay? So we just write execute non-query. And then I like to just write a little message here that if it has executed successfully, we'll just write here completed, okay? Although you could, um, you know, you could add a, another string.format. So for example, we say string.format, and we can just say um, has been added to the system. Okay, and we can now put input. So whatever is in the input has now been added to the system. Once again, we now need to close our connection. It's very good practice to get into the habit of opening and closing your connections. That way you don't have any problems, you know, it's just, yeah. It's quite annoying having to always debug and then you're kind of like, oh, I forgot to open the connection sort of thing. And then we'll do the read line. So I'm a bit worried. I think this equal here is incorrect. Um, I suppose VB will throw it a problem if I do have one, an exception, and yeah, we'll see what happens. So let's press F5 and see what we get. So the first debug, as most people know, always takes the longest. As you can see on the output there, it's going to start creating files. Although it didn't. So what's happened here? We've already got an issue. It's saying integrated security. I probably wrote integrated wrong, did I? I forgot the E there. All right, let's see if that does it. All right, cool, I've got the E, my bad. So enter a new username. So we already know that Andrew, I think is already in the database. So I'm just gonna write Andrew. And have we got an error? We do. We have a problem where the star is. 
So as you can see, I've actually spelled select wrong. So yeah, I think there's an E there. I'll just start it again. S E L E C E D. So select everything from such and such. So I put my name in, and look at that. Andrew is already in the system. Look at that. It says it's already in the system. Because if I go to my database now, we already have Andrew in the system. Okay, so this is just going to restart. I'll just quickly make a loop. Okay, so I'm just going to copy all that and then I'll just write while true, while true, do that. So it's just going to keep repeating just for the sake of the video. So I'll add Andrew and Andrew's already in the system. Okay, enter a new username, James. So I've added James, and right here, look at that, the connection was not closed. See, how annoying is that? I've become my own enemy. So I already thought I closed the connection, but nevertheless, we can put it out of the end if, and we can put it there. And yeah, that should close it either way now. So, we'll add Andrew. Andrew is already in the system. We will now add James. I've pressed enter, now I reckon it's near that equal. Look at that, it's telling me incorrect syntax near equal, so I'm gonna delete the equal sign now. I thought equal wasn't supposed to be there, but either way. So this is good, obviously good for you guys to see too, is how I'd go about debugging a program. So add a new user, Andrew. Andrew is already in the system. Oops, let's add now James. And look at that, James has been added to the system. How cool is that? So let's say, now we want to enter James, and look at that, James is already in the system. Okay, so let's add Harry. Harry has been added to the system. Let's try and add another user called Harry, and Harry is already in the system. Cool. So let's just close that and go to our table. So as you can see, there's nothing there. So I'm going to right click on my table, and go to edit the top 200 rows. And as you can see, we now have our Andrew, James, and Harry. So let's go back to our database just for the fun of it and just make sure that everything is okay. So I'm gonna add a new user called James and it says right here, James is already in the system. So yeah, I hope this video has helped guys. There's a quick glimpse again at the code. I hope this video has helped. If you do have any questions whatsoever, do leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, thumb the videos up and I'll see you in the next one.